They're coming to get me. Anyway, hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Well, today, hope you're grand and all is well in your world. Hello there, everybody. It is that time of the year again, people of the tube. It's time for the annual guitar collection video. Let's go, shall we? Let's go on. We've got a lot to, lot to cover. So, uh, before I get going, actually, on this guitar, we're going to start with acoustics. I do have to omit five... Well, not omit. I still have them. They're just not here. Um, it's been a bit of a nightmare. Um, I've got a lot of guitars in all different places. Uh, they're not all where I am now. Um, in all fairness, there's probably about six guitars. Well, what was it? Seven. I'm normally have about eight guitars here with me, and they normally kind of travel. But I have all guitars, all, all sorts of different places. So I've been kind of like driving around like a madman over the Christmas period when I got back here, uh, getting them all together. But I don't. I, I'm missing five, um, and they're still at Queenie's house. So the five that I'm missing that you won't see in this video, but I still have, are, and I'll put in, I'll put in pictures up quickly. So, starting at the beginning, uh, there's my old 1970s uh, Kawhi nylon string guitar. It looks like this. Um, and this guitar is just amazing. I, I always have this guitar in um, C standard tuning. It just It's the way it came. It's the way it's happy. It just sounds amazing. And I've wrote quite a lot of little, uh, little bits on that. Uh, another guitar that I don't have here that's at Queenie's is my Oswald John Fashanti Strat. That looks like this. And uh, that's at Queenie's. Um, I also have a new guitar, which you... Uh, well, if you follow me on social media, you'll have seen it, but I haven't demoed it yet. That'll be coming in a... In a, a well, when I get round to it in a few months. Um, that, uh, that's a Fender Telecaster. That's at Queenie's house. It's a white one. Uh, I'm not actually going to put a picture of that in, actually. I'm going to be a cheeky get and not put that in. You'll, you'll have to wait. Or you'll have to go and follow me on the socials. Anyway, um, it's uh, yeah, you know. Uh, so that's another one. Yeah, so you have a Kawhi, John Strat, uh, Mexican Telecaster. It's the Telecaster brother to Mr. White, basically. It looks exactly the same. It's wicked. So happy to have it. Uh, and then there's my East Coast Gold Top, which is also at Queenie's. That looks like this. Uh, fantastic guitar. Absolutely amazing guitar. Love that. It's one of my favourite Les Pauls uh, I own, uh, bar none. And it always will be. From the moment I first plugged that thing in to even now, I just, I'm in love with that guitar. It's just fantastic. Every time I pick it up, I just, it's just like heaven, it really is. And the last one that's at Queen is, uh, is my Adam Jones uh, signature Epiphone Les Paul custom. Uh, it's silver burst one. That looks like this. And uh, I say all, all these guitars, apart from the white Telecaster, have videos already. Like I said, I haven't got around to do that. Well, I haven't got the white Telecaster one out yet, so to say. Uh, so I doesn't have a video, but it will have one in the future. So keep your eyes peeled for that one, because that guitar is bonkers. I'm convinced, Pivotube, that those guitars, those uh, early 2000s classic players, I think they were called, uh, 67, uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s guitars, are some of the best guitars Fender ever made. Anyway... So that, they're the omissions today. They're the ones that I couldn't get here because they're still at Queen. They're 150 miles away. So, you know, and uh, I, I couldn't bring them back with me. I didn't have enough space. And uh, like I said, I've been driving around like a madman kept fetching up all the guitars. They're actually all downstairs. And uh, yeah, my downstairs room looks like a guitar shop at this point in time. It's quite amusing. Anyway, let's get on with ones I do have here. So, starting with acoustic guitars, people with tube. We're going to get the acoustics done and out of the way so we can get to the electrics. Uh, I do have quite a few, not well, quite a few. I have a few acoustic guitars. Um, like I say, you've already seen one, my nylon string Kawhi from 1970. I think it's 1970, actually. I don't think it's 97, or is it 72? I forget. Without it being here, I forget. Uh, anyway. This, we're going to start here. This is my 1974 Mountain, CF Mountain, um, acoustic guitar. It's a model W120, and this is a Made in Japan Martin ripoff from 1974. And it's probably my favorite, well, my second favorite acoustic. Nearly my favorite acoustic. You'll see my favorite in a bit. But this guitar is amazing. I love... I mean, that's not a lawsuit at all, is it? Crikey crumbs. Um, that, is, it's, that is horrifically close. This guitar has had some serious play. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Again, I don't have a video on this, but you can see, like, the, uh, the 
the fretboard pitting and this uh, this actual vein lay there is actually impressed into the neck. But um, this guitar spent its entire life around this area, um, basically in the Newark area where John Joe's from. And I bought it in 20... I want to say 2020. I think I did. I think I bought this in 2020 or was it 2019? I forget. Either way. Or was it even after that? I don't even... I don't, honestly, I don't remember. But either way, um, I absolutely love it. It came up for sale and it was... It was just, I had to have it. Uh, I do think I'm going to change the machine heads. These are the originals, but they're not that great. Uh, I think I'm going to change them at some point. But the guitar, it, the sound itself is absolutely insane. It's so rich. And I say, it's... Um, Wherever where, where there's acoustic bits, uh, I invariably use this guitar for recording. And also writing on as well. It's a really nice guitar to sit and write on. Um, but like I say, this is my go-to acoustic. It's not... Like I say, it's borderline my favourite. But um, my favourite acoustic is this one. Ta-da! As if by magic. Here it is. So this is my Tanglewood uh, Premier Series guitar. The model number is... Wow, I can barely read it. It's really faded. Uh, model number... Oh, God, I can't... Is that a T? Yeah, TW145-SC. And I've had this guitar for absolutely forever. <laughs> uh, I don't remember exactly when I got this guitar. But this is my favourite acoustic of all time. I, I, but I don't play it anymore as much because it's really fragile now. Unfortunately, uh, the bridge came off <laughs> at one point. Um... I re-glued it, it is on there, it's pretty stable, but the whole guitar, it, it does hold tune really well, it actually holds tune better than the mountain does. And I, reckon, I actually prefer the sound of this guitar, it's really punchy, it's going to peak the camera as well because it's so loud. It's just, oh my god, it's literally my, it, it's the sound that I want to hear when I play an acoustic guitar, this one. But I say, it's a bit fragile, the bridge is a bit dodge. Um, it, it just doesn't feel uh, tip-top condition anymore, sadly. And again, you know, it, it was only a cheap guitar, a cheap acoustic when I got it. And um, the pickup isn't great in it, to be honest with you. I, I'd much prefer a better pickup in it. It is electric. My mountain is electric as well, but it's got a passive pickup in it, which sounds amazing. No batteries. This one needs a battery. But this is my favourite acoustic. And again, the way it feels to play, it's just fantastic. The neck on this thing is amazing. I love the cutaway. I love the smaller body. Uh, it's got more mid-range because of that. It's really barky. Yeah, it's really punchy. But this is my favourite acoustic. The, ma the mountain comes just below this uh, and is a little bit more, more robust, um, which is really saying something, really, isn't it? considering that's like 1974, this is from 2000 and... I, I, I want to say 2004, 2005, I think I got this guitar. And it's, it's just my favourite acoustic guitar. Like I say, I, I've used this for recording, for live, you know, for writing, noodling, you name it. I've used this guitar an absolute load. It's got so many dense, dense scratches where bits of wood missing. I said the bridge flew off at one point. Okay, I opened the case at one point. The bridge was just somewhere up here. And uh, I was like, ah, that's not good. Uh, all the wood was kind of splintered under there. I've repaired it as best I can. And I'm actually, I'm actually really impressed. And again, not to blow my own trumpet here, but I'm really quite impressed with my repair because... If you would have seen this thing when it when it exploded, I honestly thought it was knackered. And I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose then. If, if it's knackered, I've got nothing to lose by trying to fix it. So I fixed it. It holds tune, but it's just a little bit fragile. Uh, so this one actually um, just hangs on the wall right now. And I play it occasionally. Uh, dur during lockdown in 2020, I used this guitar every day, though, to do songs from a red sofa because it, it just I had so much comfort, which means I can't have got that guitar. I couldn't have got the Martin. I must have got the Martin late, late in 2020. I can't have got it before then because I'd have used it instead of this one. So, yeah, so the Martin came later. But I used this guitar for every song I did for songs from a red sofa when I was doing it every day. And it's 
I just love it. I mean, like I say, one day, one day when I can afford to, I'm going to take it to my Luffia and see if he can just like overhaul it, basically. Just like really, you know, get it, get it working. And at that point, you never know. The mountain might be up for sale at that point, and I might just go back to this as my main acoustic. But at this point in time, it, when you play it, you, you can actually tremolo slightly. You can actually kind of like with 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 the tremolo with the, with the bridge. It's 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 fixed on, but for how long I don't know. And I say because it's under tension as well. But anyway, this is my favorite acoustic, a Tanglewood. Like I say, I've had this since like the early 2000s. I absolutely love and adore it. My favorite acoustic guitar, favorite sound, favorite neck, favorite body. Just an amazing guitar. Okay, moving on to the next one. I'm going to over to you. Uh, so this is my second nylon string I own. Uh, I bought this one. This is uh, an Admira Solidad uh, a, 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 a nylon string acoustic. I bought this one because uh, the one you saw earlier, the picture of, the, um, the Kawhi, doesn't like being in the standard tuning at all. Doesn't like it. It's like, no, I'm not doing that, Dave. So, uh, it gave me an excuse to go out and buy another one. Don't you just love it when guitars are just like, Dave, you need to buy another guitar. So I did. Because um, the Kawhi just loves being in C standard, uh, C standard tuning, which is like a really deep, and it's just a heavenly sound that guitar is. Um, like I said, I do have a video on all these guitars that you'll see today, apart from the white Telecaster, which uh, is coming in the future. Um, so I went out and I bought this one and I got this one in 2020 and I remember getting this one in 2020 because I, I had to go and get it wearing a mask. Uh, and, you know, I had to go to like, you know, to this person's house, I had to wear a mask and like, you know, you only allowed in a certain way. It was, what a weird time we live through, people of the tube. What a weird time. But this guitar is absolutely amazing. It's my favorite nylon string I've ever played. I prefer this to the Kawhi. I do love the Kawhi, but this one, does it all. It does all the drop tuning, it does all the standard tuning, the neck feels amazing. Uh, I've got it electric as well, this one's electric. Uh, it's got the same passive pickup in it that the mountain acoustic has in it, and it also, the Kawhi has a the same passive pickup in it as well. I forget what they are. Uh, the Luffy, John Lavoie, who I take all my guitars to, he fits them. And they're just amazing, just fantastic. And I love the fact I don't have to have a battery to run this thing. I just plug it into my Marshall acoustic amp and away we fly. And it just sounds, this guitar sounds amazing. I've done a lot of recording with this guitar. Um, it's just fantastic. It just feels great. Really nice, really nice guitar. Got a bit of a banana going on with the neck. Does this one? Have, is this the one with the truss rod? This isn't one with the truss rod, is it? No. The Kawhi has a steel, in, steel reinforced neck, but this one doesn't. The action is high, but you kind of want it high on an acoustic, I think, because you want it to ring. Got, if you have a, like a low action on acoustic guitar, I find it just kind of stifles the guitar. It doesn't sound very good. Same on electric, to be fair, as well. Like, I don't, I don't ever want the action too low on, on electric either. Anyway, so this is my Kawhi. Uh, uh, no, sorry, this is my Admira Solidad acoustic. Really, really lovely guitar. Uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Let's come on to the next one. I'm going to you. So this is the last of my acoustic guitars. This is my Echo, 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 how you say it. Uh, 12 string guitar. It's actually technically an 11 string because I always do. I do the John Butler thing of get rid of the uh, octave on the high, on the G, the high G. I just don't like it. I actually remove a machine altogether because uh, it's rubbish. <laughs> and uh, I agree with what John Butler says. It always breaks, and it's just bright and horrible. <laughs> Uh, this was given to me actually by uh, the guy who used to work with the old hat John. Um, he it was his guitar for a while, and um, he, he he bought it into old hat one day and uh, said, uh, "Well, do you want it?" And I was like, "Yes." Uh, it's had some massive damage at some point, and the top's cracked and all sorts. I've never restrung this guitar. The bridge is all broken. Again, I don't know how I'll be able to see that, but the neck on it's amazing. It's actually a bolt-on acoustic. And uh, yeah, it's had a load of stickers on the back as well. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Um, 
but it, it, it's kind of probably not very well at all. But it's it's really odd. Uh, it's but it's a great sounding twelve string guitar. <laughs> Just sounds mega. I've used this for recording and, and just like messing around on. I don't remember the last time I tuned this thing, so it is a bit wobbly. But considering I haven't tuned it for probably easily a fair few months, it's doing all right. It really is. The action on it is fantastic. It feels great to play. The neck is just great. I love it to bits. It really is amazing. I love these brass ch um, string pegs that they're holding the strings in. That's something that somebody's. I think John maybe did it, or if not, I don't know. But either way, they're really, really cool. But it's such a great, great guitar, this one. Like I said, I don't. I, I hope I never have to restring it because these strings are super old. They're years, years, years old. I got this guitar in like 2013, probably. And um, I've never restrung it. And I don't remember when John last restrung it either. So these strings are very, very, very old, but they sound great. <laughs> Just a great sound tall string guitar. Anyway, that's all the acoustics. Uh, let's start with some electrics now. Hi right, YouTube. Uh, next guitar. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually the next day from yesterday when I was doing it. I sat down to edit this video today and realised I'd forgotten the guitar, which I thought I had done and didn't show up, which means I'd forgotten it, which is inexcusable. Anyway, this is my Honor Western series. W uh, MW 400N uh, acoustic guitar from the 90s. I got this um, quite a while back now, actually. This is probably like the nicest playing acoustic I own. Like it, it plays better than my Tanglewood and it plays better than my Mountain, but it doesn't sound as good as those. It's, a, it's got a bit more of a flat. <laughs> It's just a little bit kind of a flat, a more bassy kind of percussive sound. Um, the mountain's a lot rounder and the Tanglewood's a lot more mid-rangey. But anyway, it's another guitar. <laughs> On to the next one. Okay, we YouTube, here we go. So, uh, <laughs> this is, this is what happens when Dave gets left with a guitar that he doesn't like the look of and uh, shielding tape. The Silver Surfer, people who are tube. Uh, this was just basically like a cheap red strat with, uh, my god, look how bright it is, with these kind of uh, hum like random knockoff um, uh, 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 hot rail pickups. And uh, I just didn't like it. Uh, I just didn't like the red. I, I really like the neck on this guitar, but I just didn't like the red. It, it was just a bit it was like, it was like really cheap, tacky red guitar, and I, I just really didn't like it. And the neck was really good. So I just got me to carry around and thought, I know what I'm going to do. I was shielding another guitar and I was like, I know what I'm It was sat in the corner. I was like, right, come here, you. And just absolutely covered it in shielding tape. And I dubbed it the Silver Surfer. And I actually really love the way this guitar looks now. Hence why, you know, I still have it. And will probably always have it because I've ruined its resale value. Because uh, no one's ever going to want to buy this, are they? Let's be honest. This is just kind of... Yeah, and I'm I'm okay with that personally because I really like the way this thing sounds. I do have a demo of this guitar. Like I say, all these guitars have demos, uh, but it's absolutely a beast. Uh, I don't know what these knockoff hot rails are, but they're very very good. The neck on this thing's really great. Um, this was given to me by my good friend Bob, and I've hard tailed it. The tremolo does not move, but it feels at tune. But uh, it's a great guitar. This one does spend a lot of its time in storage. I don't. Um, actually have this guitar out but it's just one of those guitars where i'm like you know i'm not going to play it a lot but i don't want to get rid of it at the same time and again who's going to want to buy this thing you know this is this is basically you know, my weird thing now but um which i'm fine with like i say i'm i'm happy to keep this guitar for the for the rest of it you know my time it's a really really cool thing and again it's just a bit weird and quirky now being red and look how much it dazzles it dazzles it excites it's shiny and I just like it. It's just a bit of a weirdo thing, and it sounds amazing. I say, uh, go and check out the demo if you want to know how it sounds. Anyway, moving on from the Silver Surfer. Okay, next guitar is my Zenta uh, Strat copy thing. Well, three-quarter size Strat copy thing from the uh, 
late 60s, mid 60s, early 70s, don't actually know. Uh, it's really hard to date these things. I would say it's a late 60s uh, guitar. Probably a Tysco made guitar. Uh, it only has three bolts in the neck plate. Um, this is the guitar that uh, if you saw my vlog when I went down to France in 2020, um, this is the guitar I had up front in the van. So when I stopped, when I was stopping on the drive down to um, Provence, uh, this is a guitar I would pick up and play because it's tiny. It's really, really tiny. And I played it on the Euro Tunnel. Um, and I just love it to bits. I actually bought this guitar when my friend Marja and Nicole were actually over here visiting me. And we went and got this guitar. So uh, this guitar always makes me think of them, which is an ace thing. And I associate it with them. And uh, as a result of that, I am never selling it. It is mine forever. It's so nice to play that, like the the neck, because it's a three quarter size. I'm pretty sure it's a three quarter size. I could be wrong. Uh, well, it is definitely in the body, but I don't know about the neck. The neck does feel a bit longer than a normal three quarter. I don't know. Anyway, but because of that, it just it's so easy to play. It sounds amazing. It's got weird wiring. I invariably just go off the neck pickup, which sounds amazing. Uh, but yeah, demo on this one as well on the channel somewhere. Uh, it's just a beast. I've wrote a lot of songs on this guitar as well, Poo Achieve. A lot of the songs that I've written on this guitar are now actually trio songs. Uh, and uh, a lot of riffs have come flying out of this guitar. And I think the sunburst on this guitar is absolutely stunning. Just looking at, it at the LCD there, this guitar looks amazing. And uh, yeah, so the Zenta Strat thing. Moving on. Okay, YouTube. Next on the guitar collection video, this is my legend uh, Strat copy. This is the only guitar I bought actually while I was in France, uh, and I remember going to get it. And it was, it was. I have nothing but really fond memories of that. It, that was, it was a great time, and I really, I miss my friends. Let's put it that way. Anyway. This guitar is amazing. It's got, you know, uh, me and my friend Nicole and Marjo, we, we cleaned this up and relicked it. And uh, like I say, because of where it came from, like, oh, this guitar will be me with me forever. Um, I have too much attachment to it to ever even think about selling it. It's just one of those things. It, I don't really have it out a lot. It, it spends a lot of its time in storage. But uh, I'll tell you, th these videos are nice actually for YouTube to kind of like reconnect with some of these guitars because... Like I say, a lot of them sp do spend a lot of time in storage because they don't have the space to have them all out, sadly. And um, But this guitar has got such a positive feeling to it. I absolutely love and adore it. And um, yeah, it, it also makes me kind of sad, like I say, because, um, you know, of what I've explained. But this guitar is amazing. Yeah, so Legend... Uh, Something strat came all the way from the south of France with me. This one, um, yeah, it's driven. It, it it came a lot of miles to be here today. Like I say, it spends a lot of his time in storage, but it's amazing. Still in tune. I probably haven't tuned this guitar in years. Just, it's amazing. It's a plywood body as well, and you can kind of see that there. And just goes to show these plywood guitars, just as good as any solid wood guitars. They're amazing. Set them up properly, you've got yourself an amazing guitar. Anyway, and this has had some serious play wear as well. Look at that, that's, that's real finger wear on there. That's not me, that's not me simulating that, that's real. Anyway, moving on to the next one. Oh no, YouTube, next guitar. This is the Myco Caster. This is a guitar, well, it's a parts caster that was uh, very, very kindly given to me by my good friend Mike, uh, who basically put this together for me. He bought the neck and the body on eBay and uh, basically assembled it out of bits and pieces he has and, and had and, and gave it to me, which I'm, I'm forever grateful for. So thank you very much, Mike. Uh, this is another guitar that will never go anywhere. Again, does spend a lot of time in storage, uh, although I have had this one out quite a bit recently, but uh, just to noodle about on it because it's a really cool guitar to sit down and write things on. And because uh, the trio are working on the new album right now, it's, uh, it's that kind of time. Um, but yeah, this... The, this guitar is amazing and neck's amazing. It's a 1970s uh, body um, strat copy, uh, Japanese strat copy, body and neck. And uh, it's got Squire Bullet pickups in it, uh, Master Volume, Master Tone, Freeway Selector, 
Uh, it's got this kind of Fender style, tre uh, well, Fender style, Fender tremolo on it. The burst is to die for. I love the fact that on the back, the burst is a lot wider than on the front. It's probably one of the nicest kind of uh, late 60s bursts I've, I've, I've seen. That's amazing. I say the guitar's from the 70s, but this guitar's amazing. Single ply scratch plate. This guitar rules today. All forever grateful to my. It's got ESP tuners. Uh, I reshaped the headstock to be more like a Telecaster. It's not quite like a Telecaster, but I like that more. Um, but when I got it, it was a bit of a funnier shape. But, uh, I like, but not as much as what it is now. But yeah, tiny little neck plate on it, like this 70s Strat copies do have. This guitar sounds amazing. Like I say, Squire bought pickups. Don't know if I mentioned that. Just amazing. This one has a video as well. Like they all have videos. It's got proper honest wear on it. It's been beaten to like it's it's just that it, this thing's had a life it really has and i love it and the neck feels amazing so yeah the myco caster people of the tube on to the next one speaking of my good friend mike here is my ingve malmsteen fake fender strat that i bought uh i don't remember now now about a year or so ago i forget now um and uh, my friend Mike basically like souped this thing up. He refretted it for me, put in these big, nice jumbo frets, new nut, uh, Fender pickups. I forget what the pickups are in this thing now, but they are Fender pickups. Uh, Wilkinson uh, folded steel tremolo. He basically like you know souped this thing up to be absolutely amazing. And it does have the scalp fretboard, and I love having a guitar with scalp fretboard. Again, doesn't come out a lot this guitar because of a scalp fretboard. It's kind of like you know. I don't play scalp trebles a lot, but it's amazing guitar. And I can see why people like Richie Blackmore and Ingve do scalp their fretboards. It's a very, it's a very appealing feeling. I wasn't supposed to rhyme, but it did. But yeah, this is another guitar. Like I said, it's not a real Fender. It's just got the decal put on it by somebody. Well, I think it's like one of those chips and ones you order online. You know comes in that yellow weird kind of plastic box when i got this guitar i really liked it but after mike had his hands on it i loved it and again going nowhere fast this guitar it's too cool i love having a guitar with a scalp fretboard uh i do want to re-lacquer the fretboard when it was uh, when mike refretted it he had to take some of the um, the lacquer off obviously to get the frets in and stuff but i might re-lacquer it at some point maybe i don't know i don't know it's cool I love it. I love the way it sounds. The pickups are amazing. I love the fact it's a black Ingve Strat because Ingve's never had a black signature Strat as far as I know. He should because this looks really cool. Maybe it's too close to Richie Blackmore's. I don't know. I love the fake Fender machine heads as well. I don't know if you've got to see that people too. But this guitar is amazing. Love a big headstock. Great neck. Great guitar. Thank you, Mike. Moving on to the next one. Yes, this is my left-handed strap here with you, but I started doing a series on and then basically just never had time to do it again. Um, I barely have played this guitar since the last episode I did on this. I just didn't, I just haven't had the time people with you. This year has been mental and I love it. Um, but unfortunately that gave me basically not a lot of time to actually dedicate to this guitar. So this guitar just kind of got, it kind of fell by the wayside. To the point where I'm actually thinking of restringing it back right-handed so I can actually play it properly again. Because I love the way this thing sounds. It's got uh, Evil Sheep uh, Experience pickups in it and it sounds amazing. Uh, and the neck on this thing is to die for. Um, this was actually a present this guitar was. Um, this uh, I got, I've had this guitar since 2005 and uh, I've had it refinished. It was originally Sunburst. It, it was an Esquire Affinity. But uh, like I said, I just... I just I didn't have enough time to dedicate to learning left-handed, which is kind of annoying as well because I really felt, I felt like I was starting to get somewhere with it, and then just it was just too much to do, too much to do, and uh, I just I didn't have enough time to dedicate to kind of like you know learning to play this way. Sadly, so unfortunately that's why that series stopped. Anyway, this is that guitar. Love it to bits. It's got the random weird um, upside down, backwards, forward, reverse. Fender strap decal that I found online and thought I've got to have one of those because it looks mental. And then I've got Jimmy on the back of the headstock as well. Uh, but yeah, 
this guitar's amazing. It's finished in nitro as well. It's it, it, I got it done when I was at Old Hat, um, and it's I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's, it's all checked and, and and cracked. It looks amazing. Anyway, move on to the next one. I go with you. This is my Squire Baritone, Squire Classic Vibe Baritone, uh, and it's just a beast. Again, this guitar spends a lot of its time in storage. I don't really get this guitar to play a lot, but again, it's a guitar that I don't really want to get rid of because I can feel... It nearly, 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 nearly made an... It, it, it still might, I don't know yet. It might make an appearance on the Trio's second album. I'm not sure yet, we'll see. But um, this guitar's amazing, it's going absolutely nowhere. Like I say, it does spend a lot of time in storage, but that's because basically I don't, I don't need to play a baritone all the time. So it's just, it's just kind of sat there waiting for when I do need it. Um, it's like a lot of my acoustics. I, I barely play acoustic, but if I'm recording or writing or, or doing certain things here and there, I need, obviously, need an acoustic uh, to do certain things. So that's what they do. They kind of sit and wait patiently, and that's what this one does. But again, this might appear on the Trio second album. I don't know yet. We're still working it out. We do have a song um, that's coming that's in drop B, which is where this comes in handy, because this is in B standard. Uh, again, don't remember the last time I tuned this guitar, but still in tune, um, relatively. And um, yeah, so this might come out on that one. It probably might be an overdub guitar for that song, but I don't know yet. We'll see where we go. We'll wait, we'll, uh, wait waiting to do a rehearsal, well, pre-production rehearsals for the next album. And uh, I will take this along, and we'll see. How, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, Squire classic vibe baritone uh, bound body. Well, yeah, it's the custom telly beast, absolute beast guitar. Moving on. I go for tube. Uh, first, the Oswalds here. This is the uh, Oswald Jag uh, Nick made for me. Uh, I don't remember when. A uh, year or so ago now. And uh, this thing is ridiculous. It's so light. There's literally no weight to this thing because of what it's made of. Next, fantastic, as usual. Uh, it's got the Maestro uh, Mastery Tremolo, uh, Nix Jag pickups. It's got this kind of like weird, kind of metallic-y, greeny blue color to it with the, with the sunb free toast sunburst underneath. It reminds me of the uh, Blood Sugar Sets Magic Jaguar. That's what it reminds me of. Um, uh, the Under the Bridge Jag, basically, which I would play right now, but I can't. But Jaguars are my like next favorite guitar to Stratocaster. If somebody said that you can't play Strats anymore for as long as you live, what are you gonna play? I'd play Jaguars because they're just fantastic. And this is one of the best Jaguars I've ever played. I love the lightness of it. It's so good. I love the neck, I love the way this thing plays. My only qualm was when I got it, it had black side dots. And when I was playing in like a dark, like a darkened room or if I would be on like a dark kind of stage or anything, couldn't see it. So I've actually replaced them with yellow. So, um, so I can actually see. Uh, I've kept the black do uh, fret dots on the, on the neck, but uh, I had to change the side ones because I just couldn't see them. I couldn't see where I was. And I go off the side dots a lot. So anyway, Oswald number one, Nick, I can't thank you enough. It's just insane. I also have two new new Oswalds coming at some point next year, people with YouTube. Just wait till you see them. Anyway, uh, if you, again, follow me on socials, you'd have seen one already. But uh, I don't have that with me at this point in time. That's on. I've actually loaned that out for now. It's not actually going to appear in this video because I'm waiting to do a video on it first. Uh, anyway, yeah, Oswald Jag. Moving on to the next one, which is also an Oswald. I'm going to have a tube. Uh, yeah, it, Oswald number two of the day. This is uh, what I called the split head for obvious reasons. But it's actually called, uh, Nick calls them the OS, the uh, original Oswald, Oswald standard, sorry. And um, this this guitar came at the same time as the Jag. Uh, and it, orig it originally had fan frets, um, which I didn't like. I, I, I've always wanted to try a fan fret guitar. And Nick sent this guitar initially with a fan fretboard neck, which I still have, actually. i still got my neck. But I didn't like it, and he very, very kindly made another neck uh, for this guitar to, for me to bolt on, and it just went on perfectly. Uh, my only qualm with this guitar was I don't like the colour. Sorry, Nick. I didn't like this kind of, like, um, maroon red, so I've relicked it quite substantially to remove some of it. I haven't got to the back yet. The back kind of still as was, but... 
uh, I've relic the, the the front here to uh, I took inspiration from Rory Gallagher's strap the way it, the way it looked at the Isle of Wight festival and um, kind of like you know just just stripped off some of it and and, and relicked it up and you know and, and beating it up a bit just because I, I I don't particularly like the red but this guitar's probably this guitar has probably got one of the best necks in the world this, this is one of those guitars that if somebody said like you know have you got a neck for us to clone? This would be the pro. This would be one of the candidates next to Mr. White that I would have cloned. This guitar is probably one of the best playing guitars I own. It's also probably one of the best sounding guitars I have as well. These are Nick's humbuckers in here, and they are coil tappable. Um, it's a hardtail as well, which I really really like. But this guitar, the way it feels to play and sounds, and that headstock which is just an art piece that is just fantastically gorgeous. Um, it's just one of the best guitars I own, bar none. This guitar is amazing. And it's always out. This guitar is always, I never put this guitar away. It's always out somewhere doing something. Um, like I said, and I like it more now. I've kind of like got rid of some of the, the, the maroon red. It is actually sunburst underneath. Um, it was, it is actually black under, it's got a, a free tone sunburst underneath. But, um, I really like the wood. I, I think it's older, but it's, it's stunning. And uh, I just love this guitar. It sounds amazing. It feels amazing. It's, it plays amazing. It's got a great feel to it when you play it. And the neck profile, good luck can Nick make guitars. Good, that man has some voodoo, man. I tell you, he is absolutely mystical when it comes down to these things. I have modded this one slightly as well. This isn't exactly how it came. I've put the gold uh, knob, knob covers on. I've got these uh, the thumb bleeders as well on there. That one's moving. Uh, I put this kind of like half moon shape thing on there. I've put the pickup rings on. Um, other than that, you know, it, it's all it's also there. It's just aesthetic things that I wanted on this guitar that I've changed. Other than that, it is what it is. Um, the way it came from Nick, and it's just fantastic. Uh, clay dots on the neck. The neck is just to die for, though. Absolutely to die for. The action, the way this thing feels to play. It's one of those weird guitars where you're playing a guitar with gauge 10s on it that feels like gauge 9s on it. It's just effortless. Absolutely effortless, this guitar. Anyway, moving on to the next one. I don't use Puma Tube. Uh, yeah, so sticking with Oswald's. Let's go back to 2017 where it all began. This is Oswald number one. So look at the logo. Uh, this is a guitar that Nick built for me, reached out to me in November of 2016, uh, said, I'd like to build you a guitar. And I was like, what? Who, are you mad? You know, but we decided on spec and this is what came. And it, it's it's just, it, this is insane. All the wear, this thing is, seen the war i have played this thing a lot it's got a lot of wear on it uh it's all honest wear i haven't relic this guitar other than through playing um the only thing i did do is i, I stripped off the lacquer on the neck because i i prefer to do that I, I i like the feel of just the wood uh actually i got my friend james to do it i didn't do it myself i was too afraid at that point in 2017 so uh my friend james stripped off the lacquer but all the other all the other chips, dints, dents, everything that, that comes from playing this thing and using it. And this was my main guitar for a long time. Uh, I actually don't have space to have it out at this point in time, sadly. So this is actually in storage as well right now, this guitar. But it's absolutely fantastic. I love it to bits. Uh, all, all the lacquer, it's nitro and it's all checked. You know what? This guitar isn't going back in storage. I'm keeping this one with me. Uh, I can't put this one away now. I, knew, I thought this would happen, people too. Out of all the guitars I'm going to show you today, I might do it over two days, I don't know. I've got quite a lot to get through. I thought this would be the one where I'm like, can't put this one away. So, uh, yeah, this, this guitar, I think, is going to stay out now. And uh, Like I said, I got a single-ply scratch plate for this guitar. Initially, it came with a free... Uh, where Nick put a free-ply scratch plate on this. But uh, because it was supposed to be like a 55-spec strat, like John Fashant is, uh, I wanted a single-ply one. So I bought one, and it's gone completely off colour, which is very, very cool. And uh, you can see where the sun's hit it, and it's, it's it's insane. And also the neck as well, there's a shadow here. 
that goes like that. So this part of the neck here is darker than this part of the neck because when it was sat in a guitar rack, the sun hit this bit, made it darker, but didn't hit this bit, and so that stayed lighter. And uh, I'm guessing this is just all UV damage. Why this scratch plate went this way, I'll never know, but it, it really has properly discolored. You can see how off color it is because of the, the white pickups. Uh, also initially came with Seymour Duncan SSL1s, which I didn't like at all. And I have a pair of evil sheep uh, pickups in it now that were custom made for me. Uh, and they're just some of the best single calls I've ever heard. Evil sheep pickups. Insane, insanely good pickups. Uh, but yeah, Oswald number one, people tune, this is where it all began. 2017, 2017. It's just an amazing guitar. <coughs> Well, that's me. Next guitar. Oh, don't get people tuned. Next guitar on the list is my 1984 Tokai Gold Star Sound Strat copy. This thing is insane. Um, being a lucky sod and having played a lot of vintage Strats, this is extraordinarily close to like a 64, 65 uh, like L series Strat, like pre CBS still. This thing is insane. And this was a gift, believe it or not. A guy called Tommy, a follower of a channel called Tommy, gave me this guitar. And uh, when it came, it had a Fender logo. And also the uh, the, the, the middle pot didn't work. And uh, I, I had to do some repairs to it to get it to, get it to work. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, wasn't in performing con condition, if you will. Uh, so I had to do quite a bit to it to get it to go, go again. But, um, and also I replaced, I got rid of the Fender logo and I got a Tokai decal. And got and restored it basically to its uh, what it what it should say on there. Uh, this thing's just insane. It's just I, I don't know. I can't even describe how good these old Tokai's are. The necks on them are insane. It's just mental. This one's got a veneer fretboard as well, which again uh, correct for the time. Everything about this, apart from the sunburst, which looks a bit kind of like you know polyurethane-y, uh, which is what it is. It's not. It's not a nitro finish, um, and the burst. The burst is pretty close to a sixty-five. I would say it's. It's kind of like that wide kind of burst with the black just literally around the edges. Um, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic guitar. Again, a guitar that kind of like. I just. I hope I never lose. Let's just put it that way. It's just insane. Um, just amazing, amazing, amazing guitar. And again, I have used this for recording uh, and all sorts of bits in here and there. Just a great guitar. Okay, anyway, moving on. Okay, over YouTube. So, new acquisition. Well, probably one of the newest acquisitions to my guitar collection is this one. This is my 1963 Hofner Super Solid V2. Uh, if you've uh, been around the channel, uh, like looking recently, well, recently in, in past couple of months, you'll see what this guitar came like. And uh, what it is now, which is fully functioning, and it's a beast, and I love it to bits, and uh, yeah, it's just a monster. Uh, again, another guitar that I don't think is going anywhere. I certainly hope it's going nowhere fast. Um, one thing I will say quickly for YouTube is there will be some guitars that some of you might expect to see in this video that aren't gonna be in this video. Reason for that being, um, my van had a bit of a catastrophic structural failure, we could call it, earlier in the year, and I had to sell a lot of things to pay for the repairs. And I had to make some very hard decisions on what I wanted to keep and what I was going to sell. And so some of the guitars that I sold was, was very reluctant, but unfortunately some of them are gone. Give you an example, the Squire Sonic Strat uh, had to go. Uh, because it was a choice between that and the next guitar I'm going to show you. And the next guitar is just my choice out of the two. And that's what it came down to eventually was kind of like, you know, which one do I prefer out of these two or three or four? You know, can I let this one go because I love that one more? So, yeah, that's what happened. But anyway, so some won't appear. But yeah, that's that's what happened there. You know, life gets in the way sometimes and you have to make these things. But uh, the ones I've kept are the ones that I'm really kind of, I like, do not want to lose. Um, there's actually no guitar in my collection right now that I want to get rid of. There's none. There's no guitars in my collection that I want to sell. 
uh, I've actually kind of got it down to that point. Anyway, Hofner, 1963 V3, super solid. Uh, seven, seven or six, seven, eight serial numbers below Mark Knopfler's first ever guitar. This thing is an absolute machine. It looks amazing, sounds amazing, is amazing. Love it to bits. Best guitar. All right, open the tube. This is my Jet uh, JS something or another. I forget now because I don't really care. This the green one. <laughs> this is my Jet Strat copy. This is the guitar that um, the Squire Sonic and a couple other guitars was up against um, when I had to sell some off. And the Jet is just this is one of my all-time favorite guitars. Um, look, feel, sound has it all you know it's in a, the the price of these things is insane for what you get and how good these guitars are it, it's insane and they're just still one of my one of my favorite guitar brands out there and i've never tried a bad one i've yet to pick up a jet and gone Ugh. you know it, and this one is no exception to that it's amazing i said this is the one that won out there was a, quite a few guitars that i had of the same kind of price bracket that uh, I was I was going to sell to help, uh, help pay for the van, and um, the jet was the one where I was like, can't live without that one. Yeah, I can let the Squire Sonic go. I can let a couple of others go, but this guitar it, it, it's really special to me, and 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 I really just it's too good. It's too good. I can't. I couldn't let this one go. And again, I would all I would pick this over the Squire Sonics. Um, because it's just a monster, absolute monster guitar. Um, actually, I did uh, the trio. We weren't the trio, actually. Uh, we released, uh, me, John Joe, and Queenie released a, a little kind of mini EP, surf guitar EP, um, last year, year before. Forget now, I forget. Um, and I did the, all the guitars with this, uh, gu this, this guitar through my Fender Super Reverb Tone Master. And um, I, I, think, I think I'd use my Jaguar my Squire Jaguar at one point, but uh, this is the main guitar I used for basically like 90, 99.9% .9 of the time on that EP is this guitar. And I'd only got it that day. And it was just like amazing. So yep, the Jet one, it's one of my favorite guitars. Again, this guitar is going nowhere. Just an amazing guitar. Moving on. I'm gonna open a tube. So I hope you're sitting comfortably because I don't think, I think we're about a quarter of the way. I don't actually know. We're, we're, we're getting there though, we're getting there. I'm going to start hurrying up though. So this is a 2002 Made in Mexico 50s reissue. It's very, very white. And uh, this was given to me by my very good friend, Bob, who wanted me to have it because it's the 50s brother to Mr. White, my all-time favorite guitar. And um, it, it, it's literally what a guitar this is. Yeah, this is an amazing, amazing guitar. Spends a lot of time in storage, sadly, because again, don't have space to have it out. Uh, hence why it's got the ashtray on there right now. Um, but this guitar is amazing. And again, another one that I will not be selling, you know, unless I, unless basically like, you know, let's not think about that because it's not, it's not, it doesn't bear thinking about. But this guitar is an amazing guitar. Love it to bits. And I really love the fact that my friend Marjo uh, has one of these as well. Hers is red. I've actually demoed it on this channel. But this is basically a brother to her guitar. Um, and I like that. And I like the fact I've got, you know, I like the fact now I've got the 50s classic player, the 60s classic player Strats, and I have the 60s classic player uh, Telecaster. I have to find the the, uh, the 50s classic player Telecaster now, and also the 70s classic player Strat. I don't think I did a Telecaster, I think I did a Finline. I want the set. I want the set. Moving on. I would open the tube. So, uh, new acquisition to the collection. You've seen this demoed on uh, Friday. This is my Squire Classic Vibe Telecaster Deluxe with wide-ranging uh, humbuckers. This guitar is insane. So I bought this from Cash Converters not long ago and it was a wreck when I got it. I needed to, <laughs> to do a serious lot of work to get this thing to work uh, and behave. But it's going to appear on the next Cheer album. It already has. Uh, we've recorded two new songs for that album already and this is on both of them. And uh, it's going to appear on more. Uh, I actually spends a bit of its time at this point in time in a case because, again, I don't have space to have it out, so it's actually in kind of storage, awaiting its time, biding its time until the time is right to strike. Because this guitar is an amazing recording guitar, which is what I'm going to mainly use it for. Um, I, I did bring it out live a few times 
but um, I haven't used it live. It feels more like a recording guitar for me. These wide-ranging humbuckers are stunning, stunning, stunning. And it just sounds so good when you pair them with any other guitar, like with single coils or humbuckers, uh, not you know, Gibson-style humbuckers. These ones, just they have a different sound to them. And then a jangle, and to double track guitars with this one and like another, like I say, a Strat or a, or, or a Les Paul, it just had so much depth. And again, hopefully you'll hear that on the new Trio album when it's done. So um, how, when that comes out, I'll go through it track by track as well and tell you what I used and where this appears. But this guitar is amazing. The next great, I stripped off lacquer, as is my way. And um, yeah, just an amazing guitar. Classic vibe, Telecaster Deluxe. I feel they're kind of a bit overlooked guitar the one with the jo with uh, you always see the ones with the humbucker in the neck and the single coil the keith richard style one i don't you don't really see this one as much and i think this one actually i prefer this one personally but anyway moving on to the next guitar okay don't keep this is my 1979 uh fender stratocaster uh like tail end of the 70s this beast uh not long had it refretted uh plays like an absolute beast now um I don't know what else to say. It was originally originally natural finish, uh, just like, you know, like they are, just the ash body. But I, I didn't like that. And because I don't plan to ever sell this guitar, I refinned it into this kind of like off-white colour. And it looks like one of Richie Blackmore's strats now. So, uh, you know, that's always a good thing. But this guitar is amazing. It's got the bullet truss rod. Um, when it went to get refretted, all the nitro on the uh, top of the headstock, because it's the only place there is nitro on 70 strats, is just the over the top of uh, the top of that bit all that's checked now and, and uh, broken it looks amazing but this guitar is just an absolute monster it's not heavy it's really comfortable the neck is amazing the pickups sound great already used this on the next trio album as well uh this combined with the telecaster deluxe my lord that's a sound people with the tube such a great guitar such a great guitar <coughs> Still got the free bolt neck as well, because I like free bolt neck. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Anyway, moving on to the next one. Oh, over tube. So next guitar is my vintage V6 Icon. This one is too far from 2008. Uh, the reason I bought this one is because I wanted an old one. I wanted one of the kind of like uh, I don't, I didn't have one in its original configuration of you know with the black distressed body. Um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, worn fingerboard and all that kind of thing. I didn't have one. I, I do have another one which you'll see next, but. That one's been modded. I wanted one kind of like totally stock because both my original V6 icons, um, uh, the first one I ever got, I sold a long time ago. I actually traded it for another guitar. And then my main one, which um, which was just like my main guitar for ages, that actually lives now with my friend Nicole Marjo in, in, in France. And, um, you know, that's where that belongs now. So I, I really wanted one of these. Uh, and I have two, luckily. And again, these are, these, this this and the next guitar are kind of those guitars that, again, I hope I never have to get lose because, you know, touch wood. Because they're just amazing. These old vintages are so good. I mean, I'm going to have to get a new one to see what it's like. People. I'm going to have to go and buy one from uh, Vintage or somewhere and uh, see if I can get one. Because I, I, I do believe they still make these V6 icons, in, like the, the Eric Clapton Blackie. So uh, I'm going to have to get one. And, uh, and just see how they compare to the old ones. Because Vintage, I've got to be honest to Vintage, the last couple of guitars that I've tried of theirs, they've sent me and I've, I've tried are really good. And that's wicked, wicked, wicked news. I'm so happy to be able to actually say good things and not kind of go, don't do it, don't do it, because the quality control is iffy. You know, I, I'm so happy that the last load of ones they sent me are really, really good. And it just makes me very, very happy. So... And again, this just this takes me back to a period of time. This guitar, and um, it's just got a great, great sound, great feel. This guitar is amazing. This is one of the original runs, I'm sure of it. it initially, didn't even have side dots, and I've actually put side dots on it, uh, which are actually um, the side dots I've put in this are actually little nails uh, for model railwaying uh, for a model railway. And I, I hammered, in, hammered them into the side of the neck and polished them up so they're silver and actually shimmer on the light. It looks amazing. Anyway, they didn't have any. But yeah, this guitar's amazing. It's good. Uh, let me show you the next one as well. Okay, so this is my other V6 icon. Uh, this guitar accompanied me, accompanied me 
when I went to France and also uh, me and my friend Nicole Marger, uh, we refinished this when they came to visit me in 2020. Um, in all fairness, this one actually has a little bit of a better neck than the, the one you saw previously. This one does a little bit of a, a bit more comfortable neck. It's a little bit thinner E to E than, than, than the first one. The first one's a bit wider. They're still both amazing guitars. Uh, this one stopped working. I need to figure out why the bridge pickup doesn't work. The other two do, but there's a faulty connection in there somewhere because if you jiggle the pickup about when it's plugged in, it actually works, but I haven't had time to actually get in there to fix it. But it is still black underneath. And this guitar initially was a friend, uh, a, a gift from my friend Bob. Bob gave me this guitar and it was originally, it looked exactly the same as the one you saw previously. But uh, such is my way of loving white guitars. I refinned it and I refinned it with my friend Nicole Marjo. And I got them to write on the back. And uh, as a result of that, this guitar means the absolute world to me. And again, is going nowhere. And again, it came, to, came with me to France. It was there the whole time I was in France. And uh, it spends a lot of its time, well, all of its time in storage at this point in time. Because okay, again, the bridge people doesn't work. But it's not a guitar I, I play a great deal of uh, because I don't want to wear the back off for a start. And uh, it is clear coated, the back is clear coated, but it would wear through. Um, and this guitar just, is, is just so sentimental to me and so, so meaningful. So uh, yeah, but these guitars, man, these vintage V6 icons, crikey. This one's, uh... oh, this is 2008 as well. They're actually brothers, I never even realized that. This must be a later in the year one though, because this one's got side, dot, uh, side dots and a bit of a skinnier neck. This is the neck I remember. Uh, that's the neck I remember on my first ever one, which didn't have a serial number. And then this is the neck of my favourite one, this one here. So, uh, yeah, I can't just trade the necks out, sadly, because then that one's wider than this one. So, yeah, such is life. Anyway, I'm going to have to buy another one. Simple as that. Moving on. Oh, no, the tube. So, uh, next guitar is me, Chapman, me. It's me, Chapman, ML1 traditional, this one. Uh, this is a guitar that I got, this is the first guitar actually, that um, my friend Bob gave me, uh, sent me. And um, I'm forever grateful because this guitar is amazing. I don't play it a lot anymore because of my Pro X, which I prefer more. Um, as you can see by the amount, well, when we get to that, we'll get, we'll get to that one, we'll get to it. But this is an amazing guitar. Uh, this is the one that's on my Anderton's interview as well. When I did my first Anderton's interview, this is the one I use and I say Lee, signed it on the back there. Still need to get Rob to sign this guitar. Um, but this guitar is amazing, sounds amazing. I don't know why they stopped making this thing. The neck is just to die for on this thing. <laughs> Lord gravy, and it looks stunning as well. It's like a blacky blue kind of finish and it's just <sighs> insane. Okay, would you do not adjust your sets? You are seeing this correctly. This is a guitar that, um, you haven't seen on the channel. Uh, this is a guitar I got in 2022. Um, I know that because it's dated on the back of the headstock. This was a gift from my friend uh, Mike. Uh, he got a couple of Squire bullets, which is what this is, in a trade or something like that, like really, really cheap. And he gave gave me one because he knows I love Squire bullets. And um, it came and it was white. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to strip the finish off and I'm going to respray it with like a thinner paint coat because it's actually solid wood this one it's not a plywood body this this thing weighs a ton this is actually heavier this is actually substantially heavier than my 70s strap this one weighs an absolute ton this guitar as a result yeah it's, it's quite hard to play a lot of and again this does spend a lot of time in storage this guitar because again space but um but yeah so i started stripping it off as you can see this is the wood there's the wood and i thought oh, it was quite cool as a relic but then me and Queenie one night got hold of the Sharpies. Well, the same night, actually. I started stripping it and uh, started doodling all over it. And it became this, which is now called the Color Caster. Um, and I love it to bits. And again, sounds amazing. This one's got gauge seven strings on it. Like, it's got the Billy Gibbons set on it. And they're literally amazing. I love them to bits. But it's all Squire Bullet apart from that. But solid body, it's the, it, I think it's like a, a four, five piece body, I forget offhand, but it's a solid, solid body, it's not plywood or anything like that. So it's a solid piece of wood. Um, I don't know what it'd be, but it weighs a ton. The neck is amazing though, the sound is amazing, and I love the way it looks. And again, you haven't seen this guitar yet, Peter Tube. I've never actually demoed this. 
uh, which is kind of older, really. I'm kind of remiss. I, I need to get to that at some point. But yeah, the colour cast of people with a tube. Patented Queenie and Dave 2022. Yeah, I actually got the date there. So, uh, 2nd and the 3rd of March. So we did it over two nights. Did we? That's really weird. I don't, I don't understand what I've written down there right now. Anyway, but yeah, there you go. On to the next guitar. Okay, okay, moving on. Uh, this is a my 1976-ish Hondo 2 Strat copy. Um, this guitar is insane. Uh, my friend Mike refretted it with massive frets because... Uh, my, my voice there. My friend Mike, he actually lent me a guitar with this, this style fret wire and I really liked it. Like, And I was like, ooh, I really want a guitar with those frets on. So this guitar really desperately badly, there's some good English for you, um, needed a needed new fret. So he very, very kindly like shoved those in and I say that's what this guitar's got now. And they're monstrously big, they're so big. But the guitar feels amazing to play. Uh, he also put a very, very, very nice bone nut on for me as well. So thank you, Mike, again. Um, it's just a beast. This is the guitar that gave me my song Never Fade, uh, the song I did for my grandma. Um, I didn't record it on this guitar. I recorded it on my um, my 62 Strat. But um, this this is the guitar the riff came out of. And the, well, the whole song came out of this guitar. But the song didn't want to be recorded on this guitar. Uh, it wanted to be recorded on the 62. But it, it, it came out of this thing. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've got to say, if my 79 Strat's body looked as gorgeous as this one, because this is ash as well, if it looked as gorgeous as this, I wouldn't have refinished it because this is absolutely stunning. The wood, the way the wood looks on this guitar is amazing. My 79, the actual wood grain on it is so boringly plain. It, 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 it didn't kill me to refinish it. Let's put it that way, people too. But this guitar is amazing. It's got a neck pickup to die for. They are the original pickups. Um, it's been modded quite a bit. Uh, if you look on Hondo 2 Strats, they definitely didn't look like this one. But... Somebody put a Fender logo on it years ago. Somebody put shallow machine heads on it years ago. Somebody changed out uh, the bridge to a hardtail bridge and drilled the holes in the back years ago. Um, funnily enough, the scratch plate that's on this guitar pivot tube, this white scratch plate, is the scratch plate off my my, my favourite uh, vintage V6 icon that now lives in the south of France. So this is its original scratch plate. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, YouTube, you know him, you love him. It is the Battercaster. Yes, I still have it. Again, another guitar that will be going absolutely nowhere anytime soon. I got this guitar probably around 2017, 2018. I forget now. There is a video of me going to buy this guitar on the YouTube channel. I went with Joe and uh, I went and bought this guitar. And um, the poor thing's had a very, very tough life, as you can see. This thing has been stabbed in the top, you can see it stabbed, set on fire, um, thrown about, abused, smashed to pieces. Well, not to pieces because it's still in one piece. But yeah, it, it got absolutely. It's 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 been beaten. Let's put it that way. It's got a gorgeous kind of flamey neck though. The neck on this thing is gorgeous. This is a Jim Harley guitar. Weighs a ton. The body is MDF wood, uh, as you can see there. It's uh, not kind of like real wood per se. It's, it's you know it's the particle board, if you will. But um, it's an amazing guitar, absolutely amazing guitar. It plays like an absolute. The neck is insane, people. It really is. Um, it has got a new nut. It's got a new wiring harness in it. Again, courtesy of my friend Mike. I have some very awesome friends. Um, it's got a freeway selector, you know, standard wiring. Um, new nut. I believe Mike put that in as well for me. Um, this thing is just ace. I fret leveled it, if I remember uh, correctly, and got got it playing a bit more, like, you know, even, because the frets were a bit up and down. But this guitar is amazing. It really is. And again, one that's going nowhere fast. I don't play it a lot, but mainly because it's too bloody heavy. Simply as that. Simple as that, really. But uh, this guitar is amazing. I, I, the tremolo is so offset as well. I can only get, I got like four springs in the back of it. It's very, really, very really old. The body's actually split. Uh, but it's holding. It's holding. Um, but yeah, there we go. The Battercaster. On to the next one. 
Oh no, Pichu, this is what I call the Oswald Pearly King. This is a guitar that I just don't ever feel worthy of because it's absolutely gorgeous in every way. It's got a rosewood neck, um, ash body. <sighs> Nick literally went, boom, knocked it straight over to, you know, what, even six? It was 12. More than that, even, um, when he made this thing. This thing is just insane, this guitar. The way it feels, the way it plays, the way it sounds, the way it looks. Filth. Total filth. Speaking of stunning-looking guitars, BC Rich Mockingbird. This is one of my favourite guitars, shape-wise, that I've ever seen. I love the shape of the Mockingbird. It's mainly because I... I'm my obsession with Slash early on, but this one's absolutely stunning. I've never seen another one like this with this kind of really cool burl maple top. Well, it's not, not maple, I don't know what it would be popular, maybe. It's absolutely insane. It looks like a painting, it doesn't look real. It really doesn't look real. I mean, it might not be for all I know, it might just be some weird photo finish thing, but it does have wood grain in the bottom. Um, you can see the wood grain on the back as well. It's not a neck through this one, it's a set neck. Uh, Mockingbird, made in Korea, but this guitar is amazing. It sounds th th this is a neck pickup like for blues, man. And it's uh, people are like people probably think that really weird to say because it's like hey, it's a metal guitar. It's not a metal guitar at all. It's a guitar and it does everything. It's such a great guitar. I love the Floyd on this one as well. I don't remember the last time I tuned this one, but it was many years. There you go. And like I said, I don't play this guitar a lot. I really don't. I don't actually remember the last time I even had this out of storage, to be fair with you. But, um, the fact it's still in tune is insane. You know, necks as straight as an arrow. It's, that's the thing that got me about this guitar when I first got it. I was like looking at the neck and I'm like, that's how straight it is. It's just insanity. It really is. I have tried different, I've tried to do two different positions to get the strap button in different places, but I always come back to its original thing but this guitar is amazing it really is so good these pickups are great the neck is fantastic 22 fret 24 fret sorry it's fast man it's a fast guitar this one but funnily enough when i pick it up i don't feel the urge to play fast i just want to play i want to play blues on this guitar all the time why that is i don't know and every time i picked up a mockingbird i wanted to play blues on it it just sounds great. Amazing. Next one. Okay, we have a tube. So uh, this is probably my most favourite Les Paul I own. This is my vintage V100 PGM um, model. And even with the Gibson, I'm yet to find a Les Paul that beats this guitar. Uh, also for looks, playability, sound... This is just insane. If I was to keep one of my Les Pauls, this would be the one. I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, I've had my Revelation RTL 59 out recently. Uh, I love that one as well. But this one just pits it to the post a little bit. It's just amazing. And again, it's back in its original um, Peter Green format now with no scratch plate and the net pickup reversed for a... For a lot, well, I've, I've had this in quite a, a few different incantations. It's also got different wiring as well. Again, I do have videos on this, all these guitars. Um, but for a while, I had to pick up the normal way around with a scratch plate. Um, but when Peter left us, um, it felt only right to put it back to its original state, uh, the, the, uh, the Peter Green state, and... Um, and keep it that way. It will never go back to the pick up your way around with a scratch plate. It, it, I, I just can't do it anymore. It's um, it, it's just it just feels wrong now that Peter's not around. I always wanted to meet Peter and get him to sign this guitar. Alas, that will never happen. Um, but this honestly is 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 I I I can I think I can quite honestly say my favorite Les Paul that I own. I absolutely love it to bits. The way the neck feels, the way it sounds, the way it feels. It's just insane. It's actually I've actually had it away recently because um, I've had my uh, Revelation out, which I absolutely love and adore as well. The RTL 59, which we'll see soon, is just fantastic. But I think this is my all-time favourite Les Paul that I own. Like I say, if I had to keep one Les Paul, 
this would be the one. I, I've got so, such an attachment to it, uh, and it's just a fantastic guitar. And I do kind of regret chopping the vintage logo off the headstock. At the time, I wasn't very happy with them as a company. I was very angry. I'm still not particularly happy with them now, to be honest with you. I've never been treated particularly well by them, um, which is, you know, the way it is. You know, maybe one day I'll, I'll tell the full story exactly of what's, what's gone on, but... Um, but when I bought this from Vintage, I, you know, I, I got a video of me unboxing it and stuff like that. It, it's just, just stunning, absolutely stunning guitar. Vintage V100 PM. Speaking of Les Pauls, this is uh, my 1970s Hondo 2 Les Paul custom copy uh, with a back stripped. Really weird because normally people strip fronts, but this one's got a strip back. Uh, this one was actually restored not by me. This was restored by my friend. Um, uh, Dr. Nerd, his name is on YouTube, and uh, this was his guitar, and uh, I eventually traded him two guitars for this one, uh, because I just wanted this one, and <laughs> I love it, it's so good, um, it's definitely not one of my all-time favourite guitars, this one, but I still love the thing, it, it's so cool, this actually has a scratch plate on it that was on my Lemon Drop for many years, uh, but this guitar is amazing, the neck is great on it, um, he did a stunning job of restoring this thing. Absolutely amazing job. Nothing on this thing is straight, and I love that, you know. And that's a factory thing. That's not anything that Dr. Nerd did. It's it's just the way it came. Like, the, the double dots on the on the 12th fret are all kind of like, you know, they're not straight, and, you know, the pickups aren't in right, and it's amazing. It's, it's just a great guitar. And it's kind of... Um, it's 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 not fully semi hollow. It it it, do, it is mahogany body, uh, full mahogany body, mahogany neck, rosewood fingerboard, but uh, it does have kind of like ports in it, if you will. So it's kind of like weight relieved, but not really. It's just the way they made it. But it does sound hollow from the top, but it's actually solid. When you look inside, it's the top, the arch top is is it is it is solid. Anyway, that's that one. Don't know what year this is. It's a seventies guitar. Um, again, 70s Les Paul copy, amazing. I love the fact I've got two Hondo 2s. I've got the Strat and I've got the Les Paul. And that burst is stunning. It's absolutely stunning burst. And I love these Mother of Pearl repairs. Absolutely amazing. So, next one. Okay, people, this is my 1989, I believe, uh, Fender Strat. This is, this is actually really rare, these things, because it's um, made in Korea this one, but it is a real Fender. These were actually proper, and it has the skinniest neck known to man. It is absolutely... I'm pretty sure this neck is skinnier than my Ibanez gem. I'm pretty sure of it. And this is my first ever Fender that I ever got. Um, we paid £150 for it. Uh, I don't play it anymore. Uh, for a long time, this was my um, number two guitar to Mr. White. And... Um, there's a video of me playing in 2012 uh, at May in Mablethorpe. We played a, a festival in Mablethorpe, and there's a video on YouTube um, of me playing Bad Penny by Rory Gallagher uh, on this guitar. And uh, it sounds amazing. It is amazing. It's been refinned. It was originally like an electric blue colour, but now it's black. Uh, it's, it's a great guitar, but again, I just don't play it a lot anymore. It's one of those guitars... That... Oh, God, it just... This is painful. It does need a refret. It does need a refret and a bit of a looking at as well, but it does need a bit of work. But the whole thing itself is amazing. Um, it sustained some damage at the top at some point, and somebody kind of, kind of varnished over over the, like this, this front front fret there. It's a bit weird, but it's an amazing guitar. Um, the pickups are a bit sterile sounding. They're not the best sounding pickups in the world, but I wouldn't trade them out for anything. Because they're just super cool. And again, these things are really, really rare. And uh, and it was really, really cool to find out that Mr. Lee Anderton's first ever guitar was one of these things. And that's super cool. Anyway, moving on to the next one. Okay, so my next guitar is this one. This is my Yamaha EZ AG guitar. And uh, I've got a demo of this thing as well. And this is my kind of synth guitar, if you will. It's got all sorts of weird and wacky sounds in it. And I absolutely love it to bits. It's great for recording and just having fun with. Um, and I particularly like it for its piano sound, so it's really, really fun. Listen, listen to that tone. Oh. 
I'd put this up against a 59 on this ball any day of the week. You know, give me any 59, this will beat it. Hands down. That tone. Listen to the sustain as well. Check this out for sustain. Yeah. Shocking, isn't it? You'll still be hearing that tonight when you go to bed. Trust me. Anyway, next guitar. I can keep with you. We're gonna have to crack on. This is my uh, Wesley, uh, Wesley, uh, Wesley, Wesley. How you'd say it? Flying V. Uh, this is an amazing guitar. This again. This was a gift from my good friend uh, Mike, and it literally stopped my craving for a Flying V. I did. I, I used to have a vintage Flying V, and that was amazing. I had to sell it because I needed money. And uh, since that one went, I always wanted one that was very similar, which means. Black body, white scratch plate, Jimi Hendrix spec as much as possible, which is exactly what this one is. Um, and Mike goes, I want you to have it. I'm like, thank you very much. And I love it to bits. It's such a great guitar. That tune. But um, this one's never put away. This one's always out hung on the wall. But um, and I, I don't play it a great deal because, you know, you can't just sit down and play a V very well. Although this one. With the tremolo arm, if you tighten that screw so the tremolo arm doesn't move, you can kind of get it to wet rest on you there like that, and you can kind of get away with noodling about like, God, it feels good. Action on this guitar is to die for, which is good because the neck is a baseball bat. Anyway, moving on from Mr. V-Town. I love the uh, the Maestro of Roller tremolo. Uh, it's so good. And it's also uh, coil tappable as well. Uh, but yeah, such a great guitar. Such a great guitar. Oh, and Epiphone humbuckers in this one. And over to you, this is my second ever guitar, ever, in my entire life of playing guitar. This is my uh, 2002 uh, Epiphone Les Paul Standard, uh, Cherry Sunburst. This is where, you know, I wanted to be Slash. I was obsessed with the Les Paul uh, before I was obsessed with the Strat. And uh, my mum and dad bought me this for my um, 17th birthday, I'm guessing it would have been. And uh, I played it to death until 2004 when I got Mr. White and the world changed but this was my main guitar for a year and uh, I just loved it and I still do love it I don't play it a lot because I don't like the sound but uh, I don't want to change the pickups in it I don't want to kind of like mess around with that I, don't, I, I just want it to be stock original you know it, it means a lot to me this guitar I I'd never ever sell this guitar because of what it means to me but it's fantastic. I do, I do like the neck though, even though it is a bit D-shaped and not anywhere near as nice as like, you know, the, the, the Revelation or the, or the Lemon Drop, the Lemon Drop or anything. But uh, this thing's, this this thing's like the best Les Paul I've got for staying in tune. Again, I don't remember the last time I tuned this thing, but it's never, it never seems to drop out of tune. It's amazing. And again, really nice actionless guitar. You can kind of get around the neck. Anyway, next guitar. Okay, from my second ever guitar to my first ever guitar. This is where it all started, people with you. This is my Washburn Maverick series guitar. Bought second hand in 2002 on my uh, 16th birthday uh, by my dad for me as a Christmas present with uh, a PV Ray Jam, which I have this over there as well. Um, three quarter, nothing's changed on it, all still as it was. Does need a bit of work, the selector switch is pretty much knackered now, uh, sadly, and um, it just needs a bit, a bit of TLC. Not a great deal though, to be honest with you. Just needs a new selector switch and maybe some new strings. Because these aren't Diodario, oh no they are Diodario, but they're, oh no they're not. No they're not. Um, I saw the chord ends and I was like, oh they must be Diodario, but actually not. So not. Nah. No, they are, they're dead. It needs new strings, but that's it. This is where it started, people with you. 2002, I've had this guitar for 21 years. And again, going nowhere. Going absolutely nowhere. This is where it all began and started. And I still love it today as much as I loved it back then. And again, remember my dad, we were being shown guitars in the guitar shop. And he was showing me like an on, this guy, this guy was showing me like an encore Strat copy. And I wasn't sold on it. I didn't like it. It was just a red, kind of strat copy, kind of generic looking. I didn't like the idea of it. And my dad called me over to the other side of the shop and he goes, what do you reckon to this? And this was just hung on the wall. And I just went, yes. No question, no question from that point on. And this was such a fantastic guitar to learn on because it's three quarter size, the action's super low, great pickups, great sound. You know, you've got a tremolo on it as well, which I've locked off now, it just doesn't move. Um, 
but it's just a beast. And this is the only guitar I own that has its back plate still on it. Um, other than that, all of my other back plates are off, and most of them are in the bin, apart from a few, which I've saved. But yeah, Grover Machine Heads, fantastic flat neck, really skinny, lovely rolled edges. What a guitar. These are amazing, amazing guitars. Um, another guitar I've got downstairs, which you've hung on the wall next to this, is a 1962 Hofner Verifin. But I'm not going to include that because technically it's not mine. Uh, it's my cousin's, actually. It's I've had I've been in possession of that guitar for 21 years as well. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, it would have been 20. No, would it? Yeah, it would have been because I I got um, basically gifted that. Well, not gifted. It's not mine to to keep. Uh, you know, if my cousin wants to sell it, it sells. It's as simple as that. Uh, but I got gifted that kind of like to play and mess around on the same year I got this. So yes, 21 years. And I've had that one in my possession for 21 years as well. And that's a really, really nice guitar. It's not great. Nowhere near as good as my super solid Hofner. But uh, I've got that downstairs. But I'm not going to include it in the, the thing because, again, it's not mine. And uh, I'm just going to focus on the guitars that act are actually mine. But here it is, people too. This is where it all started. I have a video on this. And it's just a beast. Uh, needs new strings. Um... I don't remember the last time I restrung this, but I haven't strung guitars with split headstocks like that for years. And when I mean years, I'm not talking about four or five. We're talking even more than that. I don't remember the last time I restrung this guitar. Very dead. Anyway, I'm going to treat it. I'm going to treat it soon. Some new new strings. Might do a video on it even. Who knows? Anyway, where I began, people, to Washburn Maverick series. Brilliant little thing. Next guitar. OW Tube. So, uh, this is my Revelation RTL 59. Uh, this has been in storage for quite a while now. Because um, I've been playing the Lemon Drop and also the Gibson. But uh, this thing's a beast. This is just one of those guitars where you're just like, holy monkeys. You know, uh, it needs new strings. These ones aren't bad. They've still got a lot of twang in them, but um, I don't know. I don't like gauge tens on Les Pauls, and this is 10s. And it, I just don't like the way it feels, so I want to get some 9s on this. The guitar doesn't feel as happy with 10s either. In all fairness, none of my Les Pauls. I've got 10s on all my guitars at this point in time, because for the longest time I had 9s on all my Gibson-style guitars and 10s on all my Fender-style guitars. And um, I thought, just out of ease, uh, I thought I'd just change more to 10s. But all my Les Pauls, now all the Gibson style guitars I've got, I really don't like the way they feel with 10s. So uh, I'm going to have to do like a mass, what well, I can't afford to, a mass restringing uh, of these guitars back to 9s. But this guitar is amazing. I still love this guitar. I still love the fact that when it first came, I didn't care about it. I wasn't interested because they sent me two guitars, Revelation. They sent me this one and uh, a Les Paul Custom, black custom with two P90s. And that's the one I really wanted to try. And then I was playing that Black Les Paul Custom. I was like, go on, let's have a look at this one then. And it was Cherry Sunburst at the time. I stripped the top uh, myself. And um, I started playing it and I was just like... So I was like, this ain't going back. And it never has and never will. So this is a, a beastly guitar. M Whistle pickups, Wilkinson hardware, neck to die for. The neck on this is so much like a, a vintage Gibson. Like it, it misses the V of like a 58, 59, but it is kind of like a weird kind of like like 60s kind of uh, Les Paul neck. It does feel a lot like a vintage Les Paul. It's it's mad, and it sounds a lot like a vintage Les Paul as well, especially that bridge humbucker. It's got that real Telecaster twang. But this is amazing. This is probably, um, you know, this, this is up there with one of my favorite Les Pauls, but I, I don't think it quite beats my Lemon Drop. I think the Lemon Drop is is something a bit it's got it's got something a little bit extra although this guitar is absolutely fantastic and i love it with the strip top i varnished it and stripped it and it just looks so good oh filth next guitar okay so people tube this is a, a 1970s columbus gibson 335 copy it's kind of like a 1964 spec uh 335 uh you got the block inlays trapeze tailpiece witch hat knobs um and this is this is my hollow body 
Uh, it's a bolt-on neck. This guitar also accompanied me when I went to France as well. I, I literally bought this the day I went to France. Uh, the day before, sorry. I went to France and um, it's just amazing. The neck on this is fantastic. The way it plays, the action, the sound, everything about this guitar is amazing. And funny enough, uh, when I got this guitar, I had another hollow body. I had a um, Heartwood Revival 335. Um... And it came to a point where I could only keep one. Uh, not because of I didn't want to keep both, because I did, and I missed my Heartwood. But I could only afford to keep one for certain things I was paying for at the time. These things. And uh, so one had to go. And I sold the Heartwood and kept this one. And um, to this day, I don't regret that decision. But to this, day, to this day, I want to buy back my another Heartwood 335. So I might have to buy another one at some point. Um, because they're amazing guitars. Those ones are stunning guitar. But I love this guitar so much. This one is amazing. This is actually... This one actually had a way better neck than the Heartwood. But the Heartwood sounded better. Uh, these pickups are fantastic. But the Heartwood's um, pickups beat it. But this thing's a beast. Uh, look like it's a bolt on neck. Um stays in tune like nobody's business again don't remember the last time i even tuned this thing but it's so stable and again it's it's totally hollow it's a 335 like you know style guitar but it's technically a 330 uh because it's totally hollow 330s don't have the center block like a 335 does and so and this one doesn't have a center block either so this is more of a weird hybrid between a 330 and a 335 it's a very very odd very very odd creature but the neck is just proper classic 335 1964 Gibson neck. It, it's 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 a proper rip off. And again, you've got the open book headstock. This is you know I don't know if it's a lawsuit. I get told off every time I, I use that word. So, but either way, it's a rip off and it's a hell of a rip off. And I love that it's brown as well. It's like this walnut color. Uh, color. There's so much grit and dust in this thing. You can hear it when you move it around. But it's just fantastic. Sounds great. Plays great. Is great. Next guitar, please. I'm going to move a tube. So, uh, next guitar is my Ibanez Gem Junior. Uh, I don't know what to say about this guitar other than the fact of, again, it's just stunning, stunning instrument. Totally stock. Uh, the only thing I've modded is uh, the green scratch plate, uh, which I get it in the light, light you can see. Uh, and I've reliced it as well to look like. Uh, it's kind of got the same wear pattern on it than, than a Steve Vai's number one gem and i just love this guitar and again it's kind of <laughs> this is the guitar that played on the runway at vogue fashion week this is the one that was seen you know by everyone watching that show online this is it and again i took this one because it had to be the same color as mr white mr white was the guitar i wanted to play but because of the single coil pickups and the lights and the buzz didn't happen, so Mr. Jem stepped up and absolutely nailed it. Just this guitar. Again, I bought this guitar just to do a demo and then sell it. That was the idea of this one, but that didn't happen. It's still here, will always be here. I love this guitar. I got my friend Richard to make me this custom scratch plate because I wanted a green plate, and Ibanez didn't do green scratch plates, um, but I wanted it to look like Mr. White, but like, you know, because my favourite guitars are white, green scratch plates, rosewood neck. It's just the look I love, and uh, or maple neck, I don't mind. But this guitar is amazing. Like I said, I love the fact that I, like, you know, it got to play at Paris Fashion Week, because how many guitars can say that? You know, how many guitars can say they've been on the, the runway at Paris Fashion Week? Insane. But yeah, what a guitar. And I love the monkey grip! The monkey grip, so practical. Steve, you're a genius. And again, like I say, this is totally stock. And again, this is another thing as well. Uh, this, one, this one had been in storage uh, up until maybe about a week or so ago. I got this out. Um, I went and got this out, should I say, because uh, it wasn't here. Uh, I went and got this out because I really wanted to play it. And I, bearing in mind, people, with Jube, I did, the, I did that fashion show in March this year. Uh, after the show, this was put in, the, put in the gig bag, and then it came all the way back home, and then from Queenie's house, it stayed in the case. And then when I came home, I put it in a, I put it into another case, and it went into storage. I didn't touch it. Since then, I cleaned it. I cleaned off all the sweat. 
but I didn't retune the guitar. Okay, so I didn't retune it since March, and it was it was in storage since March, and I got this out the other day from storage, and I just went, and it was it's still in tune. This is still the same. Everything still where it was when I did the show in Paris. Everything, the fine tuners, everything about it is exactly the same. These guitars blow my mind. But yeah, it definitely has a little bit of a fatter neck compared to my 80, 89 Strat though. This is a little bit, this is a little bit bigger. But anyway, next guitar, this one's a beast. This one's a keeper, without doubt. Love it to bits. Um, yeah, can't go wrong. Oh. Okay, next guitar. This is my 1990 uh, Fender ST62 Fender Strat. Um, this was a guitar that I bought for £50 because it was wrecked and ruined. And uh, initially it was all black. And uh, I didn't like that. I just didn't like the black finish. It was, I, I, funny enough, I've got a lot of black guitars, but I didn't like, the, I just didn't like it on this guitar. It, it, was, it just looked a bit meh. And so I, I, I did, um, I actually documented it, but I wanted to kind of like challenge and see how close I can get this to an original 62. Uh, so I recarved the neck to be a lot like my actual 62, which we'll see in a bit. Got repro machine edge, repro, uh, well, I actually did have a repro tremolo on it, but the original tremolo is back on it now because it actually is more precise than my repro one, which uh, I'm not overly impressed with. But hey, there you go. What can you do? But yeah, it's got the original tremolo back on it. Um, got a freeway selector in it. All the electrics are, this guitar is basically an original. It is in original state. It's been refretted though. Different machine heads. The original machine heads actually are on my friend Marjo's Strat in France. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a beast. I've hardtailed it as well because I broke the tremolo arm off in this at a trio rehearsal once, and it just it stayed as a hardtail because it just preferred it. But um, it was refinished by my good friend Scott at Golden Era Guitars, and he just nailed it. I, I said like I wanted a really classic sunburst. Uh, lacquer thing and he, he just nailed it and it's just insane this guitar is just insane and it's one of my all-time favorite guitars not bad for 50 quid eh okay so let's move on to the next one i'm gonna go to the tube next one up is the chapman what is it uh ml3 pro they sent me to review and never left uh which i'm very very grateful to the people at chapman for because they sent me it to review only this was actually the demo guitar this was actually the guitar they used on the Andertons video. If you watch the Andertons video where they're using the new line of Chapmans, this is the one that uh, Lee and Rob are playing. And I, I, I just started playing it and just connected with it in a way where I was like, I don't really want to, I don't want to lose it. And they kindly said, you can keep it. You know, they said it, again... They said, we don't want to take a guitar away from somebody who's obviously connected with it. And I thought, you legends. So this guitar is amazing. I love it to bits. It's really heavy. It's definitely not a live guitar for me, but it is one of those guitars that I pick up so much and just noodle about. I love the fact that in certain lights it goes green, and then in certain lights it's gold. Which, again, is right for a, a kind of gold top. It, like, from where I'm sat, when I look down, it's lime green. But it looks gold on the LCD. But if I do this... It goes gold, but it probably went green for you. But the neck on this is to die for. I have changed some things aesthetically. Not, uh, I ain't changed the pickups or anything, but I have put white pickup covers on there. I put gold knobs on there, uh, and I put a pickup surround uh, around the humbucker, just because I like pickup rings. I'd, I'd, other than that, the guitar is as it as it came. I just didn't like the black, and I didn't like the black knobs. I thought it just looked a bit. Weird. I thought gold is way better. And this guitar is just an absolute monster. Absolute monster. It's one of the very few guitars as well, which I've got set with a, with a floating trem. Because the tremolo on this is just absolutely stunning. It's a Wilkinson tremolo. And it's a two-point, which I normally don't like at all. But this guitar, except into a rule. Okay, so anyway, we move on to the next guitar. Okay, people tube. So this guitar is... It is one of the guitars that means the most to me and will always mean the most to me. And I got this very, very recently. Um, this is my friend Charlie, uh, who I've done videos on and spoke very, you know, a lot of on this channel. This was his. And it wasn't just his, it was his brother's before him. And when his brother passed away, Charlie 
got this guitar and uh, when Charlie passed away it, it went to Charlie's son who eventually uh, decided he wanted to sell it and I just happened to see the listing right place right time simple as that and now I have it and it's one of those guitars that's very very heavy because I never played this guitar when I used to play alongside Charlie and I never played this guitar I always played next to it while he played it and uh, when he passed away in 2016, I, I thought that was the last I would ever see of his guitars. Um, and I did ask the family if they were willing to let one go, and they said not really, no. Which I totally understand, you know, they, they, were, they were an important part of his life, you know. Uh, so I totally understood, and I thought that was that. And then, like I say, just uh, about a month or so ago, two months ago or whatever it was, this one came up for sale on Marketplace, and I just knew it immediately. And... I, 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 it wasn't up for a lot of money. I would have paid triple the price to get this guitar. I really would have done, um, because it's so meaningful to me. And I've got pictures of me. I, I've yet to demo this guitar because I haven't, I haven't quite got round to it yet mentally. It's, it, it's still, I play it occasionally. I've never cleaned this guitar. It's, it's filthy and it, it's really relicked and dinged up. Uh, it's, it's had a lot of use. And like, look at, the, look at the finger wear and side of a neck it's it's is heavily played it's it's a very modded squire affinity from two uh, the year 2000 like very heavily modded i'll get into what the mods are when i finally get around to doing a video on it but this guitar means the absolute world to me um like it, it's priceless it's totally priceless um yeah there isn't enough you, you could offer me John Frusciante's 62 Fender Stratocaster and you ain't getting this guitar off me. No chance. And and I honestly mean that. That's not me being like, you know, dramatic for dramatic sake. I honestly mean this belonged to one of my heroes. This is one of my heroes' guitars. And um, I play it now because he can't anymore. And uh, it just means a lot to me and I always will and I'll always have it. And... Um, it's just a bit of Charlie, and I've got you know. It's just a bit of him, and I I've got it now, and and that makes me very very happy. Uh, if you give me one sec, actually, yeah, I just wanted to go and fetch this quickly. So there's Charlie with this guitar on stage, and like I say, this is this is that guitar. This is that guitar, and and that's just um, so meaningful to me. It really is. It's making me a bit funny. Anyway. Let's move on to the next guitar, Pooh True, but I'm so honoured to have this guitar. Uh, still smells like Charlie as well, which is uh, which is cool. But it does choke me up. Anyway, let's move on to the next guitar. Oh no, Pooh Tube, that's not a guitar, I hear you cry. No, it's not. This is my Columbus Jazz Bass from 1970-something or another. Don't know. Some date. But this, this is my bass. No, it's a guitar. And I love it to bit. Uh, when I got it, it was an absolute wreck. The neck was like a banana. It just wasn't happy. And it took me a long time to get it right, to be honest with you, it took a long time. Uh, I shaved the neck down as well. The neck, when I got it, was an absolute baseball bat. And I've shaved it down to a lot more like vintage profile. Uh, it, it reminds me of a 1974 jazz bass we had at Old Hat, actually. It's kind of what I was kind of going for. I remember how that bass felt. And uh, being like a, a 70s bass, I thought that'd be, that, that should be kind of like what I'd go for, neck carve-wise. And because of that, it's so nice. It's so nice. I can't play bass very well, but it's for when I need need to record or anything like that. And it sounds so good. Ah! I think you'll all agree I am the slap bass master. Okay, so uh, the next guitar is my Squire. Uh, Vintage modified Jaguar. Uh, this is my this is one of my favorite guitars of all time. I actually do prefer this Jaguar to my uh, Oswald Jag. I love the Oswald Jag, but uh, this is this is this is the one for me. Uh, I did refinish it. It was originally green. I've refinished it in white. Gave it a matching headstock with a Fender decal, uh, and it's just a beast. Refinished it in nitro as well, and it's slowly wearing through. And it's not technically white anymore. It's kind of off color. But this guitar is amazing. This was the main guitar I had when I was when I played with Dukes to Luda. And uh, like I say, this is that guitar that if somebody said he can't play strats anymore, 
This is Speeder 1. And what's this? what year is this thing? 2012. I think I got it. When did I get this? Twenty. I got this in 2016. And uh, yeah, it's just been proper workhorse. Original bridge on it as well. I really like the original bridge. I've got the guitar to work for me. It might not work for everybody, but I've got it set up the way I want it. Have it set up. It works and blow it to bits. Okay. Into a final six people with tube. There's only six more to go. Okie okay, dokie, this is uh, my 1970s something or another Arbiter Les Paul Jr. copy. Uh, I bought this uh, this year and uh, I love it. It kind of like, it, it, I've always wanted a junior um, and this one's beaten, absolutely worn and played in and it feels great and it sounds great. It's barky and I love it. Absolutely love it. And uh, like I say, it's had a life. Which is always really cool. It's just a great guitar. It's got a pan. It's got the uh, '70s pancake body. It's not a bolt-on neck. This one. This is a proper set neck one, and it is a proper proper copy. See, it's got the open book headstock. It's got shallow machine heads. Um, you know, it's a proper. You know, <clears throat> bit questionable in it. Bit close, but it's great guitar. Love it to bits. Going nowhere fast. Kind of gets my craving for a Les Paul Junior. Something with P90s. Because I'm not really a big P90 fan, to be perfectly honest with you. I do like P90s, but only occasionally. I'm more of a single call uh, hum humbucker kind of guy, if you will. But this one covers my base if I need a P90, which I will at some point. I can guarantee that. Okay, moving on. Next guitar. Oh, number two. This is my Gibson Les Paul 60s standard that I bought this year. I never, ever thought I would get to own another Gibson. I've owned one before and had to sell it. And I very nearly had to sell this one this year when my when my van went. Um, it, it it was it was up for sale, and it broke my heart. Absolutely broke my heart to put it up for sale. I was it killed me. People who achieve it really did put this up for sale. Luckily, I sold enough other stuff. Uh, I sold quite a few amps. I sold more amps than I did guitars and um, guitars that I was able to cover the cost of what I needed to pay for the van to be fixed and I was able to hang on to this Les Paul so I was very 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 happy about that because I was utterly heartbroken when I thought I was gonna have to sell this thing because it's literally stunning um, I really do love it like I said I, I, I definitely love my lemon drop more but this guitar man it, it, from a moment, from from the go, from the word go, when I picked this guitar up in Anderton's, I was like, I'm not leaving without this. I am not leaving without this. It's so special. The way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it feels. Crumbs galore, people who achieve. This is good gravy right here. It really is. This is an amazing guitar. And again, I hope, hope, touch wood, everything, but I hope I never have to get rid of this guitar because it's absolutely Oh, it's just amazing. The neck isn't anything like a 60s Les Paul at all. It really isn't. Um, but the way this thing sounds and plays, oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. I really do. Um, if I had to sell, like, you know, guitars, other guitars are going before this one. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I love the fact that in certain lights, it looks like a plain top. And then in other lights, it's got this real flame that pops out. It's a real, real chameleon when it comes down to the lighting. I love it to bits. And, like I said, I never ever thought I'd be able to buy a Gibson. I never thought I'd own a Gibson again. I owned, I owned a Gold Top, an R7, years ago, and I had to sell it because I couldn't afford to hold on to it. And I never honestly thought I'd own another one. So when when I picked this one up and could afford it, I was like, it was a no-brainer, absolute no-brainer. Well, I say afford it, you know, did have to kind of live hand to mouth for a while and i did have to sell some things as well to kind of offset this but um it was worth it, it really was and i love it to bits absolutely love it to bits it's amazing i've absolutely i'm caning the finish i am caning the finish it's got dense dense scratches you name it this guitar's got it it's got wear uh on the on the headstock where i've actually bumped it into things and knocked it i haven't broke the headstock off yet you know, touch wood, I won't just yet. I'm sure it'll happen at some point because Les Pauls always seem to go that way eventually. But other than that, this guitar is amazing. Going nowhere fast. 2022. Uh, I think there was some confusion in the, in the video when I demoed this because I said the wrong 
number, which I'm prone to do because of my dyslexia. I'm, not, I'm no good with numbers. They kind of jumble in my mind. So 2022 can easily become 2002 or 2012. You know, it, it can very easily kind of jumble around in there. So, uh, but yeah, it's from 2022. It's basically brand new this year, this guitar. Uh, it's a 60s standard. There was a 50s standard there as well, and I just didn't like it. This this one jumped out at me, and I've waited. I have waited a long time to find the right Gibson, you know, and this is the one. This is definitely the one. Um, you go a long way to beat... Uh, well, you, I would go a long way to beat this one for me. It's just fantastic. I love the way it looks and feels. My only qualm with it is it's very, very heavy. Hence why I've got a really, really wide Gibson strap, which is very, very snazzy. And, you know, that I've got on here now. Uh, but, um, you know, it's worth worth the shoulder ache. Anyway, uh, next guitar. Oh, no, with Jupe, uh, next guitar. Uh, this has been a long day doing this, I tell you. So this is my 1959 replica Strat. Uh, again, my uh, good friend Scott made the body and the neck for me at uh, Golden Era Guitars, and I assembled and recently got some new pickups for it, which I have done a video on. Uh, again, if you follow me on the socials, you'll know what they are. You'll know what I've done with it. And this has gone... Um, Straight into my number one live guitar with my other number, my other number one live guitar. Just off camera, you'll see it next. I absolutely love and adore this thing. Not only is it absolutely gorgeous, 1959 kind of replica strap, right burst, right neck, amazing, an amazing neck actually. It's now an absolute live monster. Uh, it's got locking machine heads on it now, uh, vintage style locking machine heads. They look like, you know, they look like normal Cousons that way, but they're actually locking. Uh, it has humbuckers in it as well because uh, I was finding I was struggling a lot with buzz. And it, uh, I, I, when you, when I get to the video on this guitar, you know, you, you'll you'll hear more about it. But uh, for now, if you if you see the trio live, this will be my main guitar. This is the one you will see um, within the next year. You know, uh, I don't really see this one falling out of favour anytime soon, especially not for live work. It, I've already done, all, uh, I did the last load of gigs with the trio with this uh, last year, this year, sorry. And it's just a monster, absolute monster of a guitar. I love it to bits. It looks exactly how I want it to be. It's going to wear as well because it's proper nitro. So it's so over the year, it's, years it's going to wear. But it's got all the kind of like, modern things that i want like you know these 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 humbuckers these these simul duncan humbuckers are so quiet and who would ever thought that i would ever have my two main gigging guitars with simul duncans because up until this year for youtube simul duncans were not for me and uh that is that's changed that has changed with the especially with these pickups in this anyway i'm sure some of you know what this is anyway, uh yeah so that's this one next guitar Okay, with you, next guitar is my uh, Chapman Guitars ML1 Pro X. This guitar, since I got it, has done every gig with me. And uh, this is my standard tuning guitar. The one before this, the 59, that's uh, my sta that's my E flat guitar. Uh, and this is my standard tuning guitar. But I can do a gig with either one. You know what I mean? Because of the locking machine heads, because they're set with the tremolo flush to the body, if I fancy I want to use this for the E flat stuff, which is the majority of the trio set, I can down tune this one, tune up the 59 and switch and swatch them. Uh, but this has been my main e, e flat guitar, uh, uh, standard guitar, sorry, and the 59 is my main E flat. But this guitar is amazing. Like I said, I haven't done a, since I got this guitar, I haven't done a gig without it. And I don't intend that change. This is one of my all time favorite guitars. When I got it, there were certain things about it that I didn't like that I had to change, but I knew as soon as I touched this guitar that this is this is like one of those really special guitars. I knew I was gonna have to like, you know, this is gonna be amazing. When they sent me this, I was like, oh my God. So like I said, I've stripped the top. Uh, it's got a one meg pot in it instead of a 250. Um, it's got the white pickup covers, white pickup surround there, white pickup ring. Uh, other than that, it is what it, how it came. You know, we've got Jimi Hendrix on the back. It's a stick of it uh, John Joe gave me and went immediately on the back of this guitar. But uh, it's basically a stock guitar apart from, I say, the 250k pot and the white hardware and the stripped top. Other than that, it is the Pro X. Oh, and also I put gold knobs on there as well. Um, oh, and also the fret dots as well. That's me. 
Uh, I've done that. But other than that, like I say, it's just a stock Pro X. And this guitar, to me, like I say, this is just a live guitar. It really is such an amazing live guitar. It's unreal. I mean, I've, and the way it feels to play the neck on this thing is just vile. It's so good. It's just, it, it's wrong. It's so good it's wrong. Let's put it that way. But yeah, so um, this and the 59, they're my two main gigging guitars. I do have another one coming, which I'm not going to say too much about because you'll see it at some point. Because... Um, I do like to gig with three guitars, just in case. Um, I like to have two guitars in E-flat and one in standard, and that's what I've been doing this year. The, like m The main two guitars I've been playing is this one, the Chapman and the 59. And if it, uh, Before the 59, it was my Adam Jones, but didn't really get on with the custom thing, the Les Paul thing. It doesn't really suit me for, for live. If I was just playing guitar in the trio, I would, I would be okay, but I'm not. I'm singing as well, so there's a lot in... You know, there's a lot more I need to be comfortable. But uh, I would like to have another guitar just in case, you know, and uh, just different variety. And, uh, yeah, so, and I say this, this covers all, you know, this covers some bases. It's got single coils if I need them, but they're, they're noiseless. And that's another thing as well that I've really got into recently, people tube, especially for live, is no buzz. I don't want to hear buzz all the time anymore, um, especially not for some of the new trio stuff. It kind of detracts from it. So, uh, so yeah. Next guitar. This guitar's amazing. Totally got it wrong when I said we were into the last load of guitars because there's uh, there was there was a few more than I expected. Actually, it was the 59 and the Chapman. They were sat right in front of me in their cases, uh, and I thought I'd done it, and then realised I hadn't done them. Anyway, next guitar. This is my Oswald Telly. This is the second ever Oswald that Nick made for me, and by Jingo, my favourite Telly of all time and space. Uh, I do have a couple of other Telecasters, including that white Fender. And um, I've got the Telecaster Deluxe, and also I have the Chapman uh, uh, Gold Top. But this is the one. This is the this is the Telecaster, and again, it, it's it's a custom thing. It's thinner than a normal Tele. It's got the Strat contours. It's got the belly cut on the back and the arm contour on the top. The neck is a clone of Mr. White, which I'll see soon, and it's just a beast. It's out of tune. That's okay. Uh, I've yet to restring this guitar, Pure Tube. I got this guitar in 2018, and these are the strings it came with. The action it came with, I haven't done anything to it. It is how it came. So, <laughs> and I love that. And it's really faded. When you take the scratch plate off, it's actually yellow underneath. I mean, it's yellow now, but it's yellower underneath the scratch plate. It's kind of like you can see the difference uh, front to back as well, maybe. Like, the back's a lot more vibrant than the front. It's kind of faded over the years. Anyway, just this is just the, a beast, a beast of guitar. This one, amazing Telecaster, and again, neck to die for, the actions to die for. Filth, total filth. All right, Blue Tube, uh, third to last guitar, I do believe. Um, so, everyone, if you've been on this channel long enough, will know this guitar. This is my red, over three tone sunburst Oswald that I got. In 2019 and um, when I got this guitar I was going through a lot I wasn't going through a very good period of time and this guitar really helped to soothe that hence why there's no finish here now because at that point in time I was using a one millimeter plectrum which I don't use I've got I, I don't use them at all anymore uh, although saying that I do like these these are one of my this has become one of my favorite plectrums it's a uh, jazz free but it's Eric Johnson jazz freeze and I do like them, and I do use them a bit. But I was using this big, thick, kind of one mil uh, pl uh, plectrum at the time. Uh, I normally use 0 0.50 or 0 0.60. And uh, absolutely at the finish away very, very rapidly there. Um, other than that, you know, the Relic is pretty much how it came, apart from some dinks and dents where I, uh, I accidentally bumped into a wall uh, and a door, but hey. Um, but this guitar came along at a, a time when I was a bit kind of not in a very good place and this really helped me through that time and this guitar again this is one of those guitars that just means the absolute world to me it's one of the best guitars I own it really is like the neck is fantastic the way it plays is fantastic the pickups are fantastic uh, I toyed with the idea of getting the same Seymour Duncans that are in the, F the, uh, the, the 59 in this so I could go out gig in this and use this live again because again because this has got single coils um, you know and I, I want humbuckers live now my tastes have changed I've used humbuckers forever uh, single coils forever 
And uh, Humbuck has kind of cover what I want now. I mean, I'll probably go back to single cores at some point, but at this point in time, uh, this isn't on the cards. But I, I, I can't. I, I, it'd, be, it'd be absolutely, you know, it'd be a crime to rip these pickups out and put another scratch plate on new pickups in it and just to use it live. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So I'm keeping it the way it is. This is a hardtail. And again, when I got this guitar, it was it, I didn't have any plans for it to become what it is to me you know the idea was like you know be, i got a hardtail strap that'd be really really cool so um because initially this was designed with a tremolo but then i changed my mind and nick very kindly changed to uh, change it to a to a hardtail but uh, this guitar is insane it really and it really does mean the world to me this one this one's this one's um i would say this one's numero uno out of the oswalds definitely closely followed by like um the number one Oswald, but this is this is insane. This one is so good, and uh, yeah, there's there's many uh, there's many siblings to this guitar as well. I know I know it's got a lot of clones out there in the world. I've seen I've seen a lot, I've seen one of the clones up close. Uh, this guy came to a gig and bought his clone of this one, and uh, it's very very cool to compare them. But uh, say this is this this one is uh, this one's mine, always will be mine unless. Uh, I don't want to say anything. Okay, so uh, moving on to the last two guitars. Okay, oh, people tube, last two guitars. This is my 1962 Fender Strat that I got uh, in 2017. I've had it since 2017 now. Um, helped out by some of you out there, and I will be forever grateful of that. Um, it's it's on its second refret. It's had the front, uh, the the bridge and the neck pickups rewound uh, by Matt Montes. Uh, I've got different wiring in this guitar now. It's no longer traditional wiring at all. Uh, still got the freeway selector because I hate position two and four. Just doesn't appeal to me at all. Uh, I've got a master volume, master tone. The middle tone doesn't do anything anymore. Uh, replaced tremolo unit. It's the third tremolo unit in this guitar. Um, it does have the original machine heads. I put them back on. And uh, it, it's a four spring guitar this one i do have the back plate for this guitar as well i just don't i just don't like it on it but i do have it in its original case uh which at this point in time houses uh what's in the original case for this guitar in, when it's in the storage box uh i think the tokai is in it at this point in time no i'll tell no i'll tell like it's the 50s white mexican strat is in this original case right now anyway this is one of those guitars where, uh, that's basically wherever I am, it is, and um, that's there's no ifs, no buts there. And this is this guitar, again. This is like uh, the Oswald split head. And by the way, if you notice, it's actually getting dark outside now. I've been it, done this all day. This has taken hours. I started at half ten. It's four o'clock now. Okay, so um, this has been a long one, but hopefully it's it's been okay. Um, I've tried to kind of cut it down as much as I can time wise, but I say this is just a dream come true. Absolute dream true. I never thought in a million years I'd own this. Oh, it's got a different nut as well. It's got a new nut. The original nut was knacked. And also, that screw and that screw have been replaced because the originals were just rusted out and useless. I still have every part. Everything that's broken on this guitar, including the coils, I still have them. Uh, I have them in a little tin. So any, if there's a screw that I've replaced, I have the original in a tin. Uh, the... Uh, the uh, the copper coils the original ones around there when it got rewound I've got them I put I've, they're in they're in a box um, like I said everything that I take off this guitar I keep and store away I've got the original nut uh, you know you name it I've got it I've got all the wires that we took off when we rewired it at Matt's uh, but this guitar's a beast sounds amazing absolute t plays this is the best play in vintage guitar I have ever played bar none. Uh, this is the best playing strap I uh, like vintage strap I've ever played. And in all fairness, it's probably the best guitar I own to play. Like playability-wise, this thing is just insane for me. Anyway, like when I pick this thing up, there's there is nothing that's a struggle. I can fly on this thing. I can go really fast. I can go really slow. I can do all sorts on this thing. It's just ridiculous, and it sounds insane. Especially now that Matt brought these pickups back to life. You know, because it was dying, sadly. They were just a bit weak. Anyway, let's go to the last guitar. I think you know what it is, but let's go and get him. He's just down there. Okay, no people with the tube. Here we go. Final guitar of my guitar collection video 2023. This is my 2002 
1960s reissue. This is just... This is just the one. You know, Rory, Rory Galahad is 63, Jimmy had his 68, uh, Steve Ray Vaughan had his 62, Mike McCready's got his 60, John frusciante has got his 62. I have this. This is my... This is this is just my number one of all time. And this is the guitar I play the most. Out of all the guitars you've seen today, including the 62, all the guitars I play with, this is the one I, I will go to. You know, no ifs, no buts. I always go to this guitar. The way the neck feels, I've, I, I take, I've taken the lacquer off the back of the neck. I did that years ago now. And um, this is just my go-to guitar. It just feels perfect. And this is the guitar I learn everything on. And literally everything. Uh, we've got to replace saddle here. Uh, it's um, third refret, fourth refret, I forget now. Uh, one, two, three, yeah. Yeah, third refret, it needs to go in soon because the frets are getting a bit, it still plays. Until it doesn't play, it stings. But the funny thing is, uh, th yeah, this one doesn't, uh, Mr. White doesn't play as well as a 62. But I always go for it. It, it. It's it's the one I'm most comfortable with, even though I can I can do certain things on the 62 that I can't do on this, or other guitars that I can't do on this. This is the one I always end up gravitating back towards. It's just the one. It's just the guitar I'm most comfortable with. And I say, I, I, I bought this brand new. This has only ever had one owner, me. And um, like I say, uh, I'd like to keep it that way. Uh, basically, well, until I'm not here anymore. Let's just put it that way. And I hope it goes on to, you know, as good things. And I hope whoever gets it after I'm no longer here to play it uh, loves it as much as I did, uh, you know, and do right now. You know, I'm not planning to go anywhere for a while yet, people are due. Let's put it that way. But yeah, I got this in 2000, uh, 2004, and it basically, you know, this booted the Epiphone off the top spot, and everything else, basically. And this is a guitar I judge every other guitar by. If it doesn't feel, and uh, if it doesn't make me feel like this one, I don't want it. Uh, and it's a very high benchmark. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of guitars out there which, uh, you know, they don't come close to this guitar, but they come close. If that makes any sense, you know the 62 is an amazing guitar, uh, and all my other guitars are amazing guitars. But this is the number one, as as you all know, and you know I, I love this guitar, and it's 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 been beaten and played, and it's got finish miss, missing and, and chips and and cracks. The scratch plate on every screw thing is near enough cracked. The yep, the scratch plate actually broke away. I've had to I've, the scratch plate down here, that bit there, and there's a bit on here is actually glued to the body. It's not even part of a scratch plate anymore. It's actually part of the body. I glued it on because I didn't want to lose it. For a while, I didn't have them on, but I glued them back on eventually because I liked it. But this is the one. Again, I learned everything on this neck. I learned everything I know about guitar and how to play guitar on this guitar. And again, it's just the one that I just feel most comfortable with. It's the one that has the sound I want. It's just perfection. It really is the perfection. And again, like I say, it doesn't play as well as some of my other ones. The 62 plays better than this one. The Red Oswald plays better than this one. But there's just something about this one that's just, well, there's a lot about this one. Let's put it that way. And it'll always be my number one. It'll always be the guitar that I uh, go back to. And like I say, if I could only have one guitar, it'd be this one. Uh, that'd be horrible though. Who just wants one guitar? Who wants that kind of life? That's like my idea of hell. Anyway, there we go, people too. That is my guitar collection 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a long one, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. I uh, hope you were sat comfortably with a cup of tea or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, I will see you again very soon for another video. And uh, oh yeah, welcome to 2024, everybody. Happy New Year. You know, since this is going out on New Year's Day, should I say? Um, yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you didn't get too blatted last night. Uh, but yeah, 
Let me know which one is your favourite out of my collection right now and which one would you want to play. Let me know in the comment section below because uh, I, I love to read your comments with YouTube and uh, I'm always curious to know which one is your favourite guitar out of the ones I own. Like I say, there is a few that have, have gone, um, sadly, because, you know, things get in the way. But again, look, where I am now, uh, there's none that I really want to sell. There are, if I had to, there are some that I have kind of marked if I have to. Um, but uh, it certainly won't be this one. <laughs> I can tell you that for true. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the food with Tube. Uh, I'm off to get a cup of tea now and relax because this has been an all day thing. I've also got to take all the guitars back to storage that are in the storage after this. I'll, that'll be tomorrow. That'll be, I'll be doing that tomorrow now though. I'm not going out again after this. But uh, yeah, so anyway, let me know your thoughts, people Tube, and which one was your favorite goodbye now thank you so much indeed for watching and also thank you so much for your support over the years it means the absolute world to me let's uh looking forward to 2024 more guitar videos coming more amp videos coming more pedal videos coming hope you know i'll do some geek vlogs and stuff like that and uh yeah fun times fun times goodbye now everybody have a great one see you later